Welcome, bite. We need a name of this podcast. Like, we need a name for our for this. Like, how we had fade the public. We need Bashcast. Uh, it's just mm. so bad. That was the first thing that came to like, mind. It's like low hanging fruit, but if the fruit was been rotten for two weeks, yeah. you know, like well, I'd never take a bite out of it. We're about three weeks into the show, so yeah, we've been in the office for six months. Yeah, like we have to have something here, right? Yeah, it's the BDG podcast. I feel like everything just kind of goes under BDG, and that's it. Yeah, but like I want a name for this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we could be like, hey, we're recording this. The, the cunt cast today or something. Love yeah, it. that's that's honestly. Can't <laughs> I, believe I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, welcome back to the cunt cast. Uh, every Friday, we basically uh, look through our matchups in the bash. We talk through any sit start decisions we have, anything that are that's going on in the bash in general. Um, and I'll just start off by saying my cousin Mike, who I like ripped on in my post draft video. I don't know if you, I did like a recap of the of the bash draft overall, just from my POV. Probably I was talking about league, how isn't he? What? He's probably winning the league, isn't he? Uh. I am actually 2-0, and oh, and I am ahead of him right now. However, he dropped Elijah Mitchell this week. Sus. Which is, an, and somehow I didn't see it. I guess this is what happens when you're in so many leagues, you know, and you just can't pay attention to fucking, it's crazy. Like, I, I don't pay attention to any of them. It's one of those things where it's like, I'm in so many that I just give up on all yeah, of them. Yeah, I get, that's what happens to me. It's like, I'm either going to pay attention to all of them and put in like a lot of effort or just wing it through all of them. And I just tend to wing it every year. Yeah, it's brutal. Cause someone, shows. <laughs> someone picked them up. Like I went zero RB pretty much in that league. So he would have been perfect to have in like eight weeks. Uh, someone picked five dollars on him and grabbed him that's crazy that someone like if i saw him i would have been way more than five dollars if i knew yeah i would have been 15 20 right yeah right? like i'm trying to secure him for sure because you're looking at guys 100 percent. we have <laughs> like travis homer and tristan ebner like those are the guys on the waiver wire yeah it's you like know a, who they are elijah went for five dollars and then aj green went for three dollars tyler conklin three dollars tyler huntley got picked up this week it's insanity is it I didn't though, even drop him. Like, who's on his bench that he's like, right, I'm going to yeah, drop I, I would have fucking Elijah dropped Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell. No, so here's too. the thing. When you have a, a league, like, we, we're, it's a very deep we roster. Up, so we have a lot of bench up spots. Up Ash for him. Oh, wow, yeah. that's worth it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're not going to start a guy Shop that you're picking up, then there's no point in dropping, like, Elijah Mitchell. Like, if the guy you're picking up for him isn't going to be an instant starter, there's really no reason to be dropping Elijah Mitchell. Yeah. yeah. I, and I also think we have one IR spot. Isn't a Mitchell on the IR? Yeah. Yeah, so like what, just, that's just malpractice, I feel like. I mean, you think your, it was collusion? That's your family, dog. It's colluding with someone. Why wouldn't he collude with me? I'm his family. <laughs> yeah. He's colluding against you. Holy shit. All right, whatever. Uh, let's look at my matchup. Okay, so my team feels like relatively secure right now. Uh, I'm just, I think the only thing I'm trying to figure out is what I want to do with my first flex box. Right now, I have Alan Lazard in there. He's going against Tampa Bay. I have Naeem Hines on the bench who, like, I'm just done with Naeem Hines, yeah. which is which is typical Naeem Hines fashion to go off, you know? This is the week. Honestly, it's been a lot. Of, it's been a big, not a big story, but I've seen a couple of tweets and people talking about how, like, how did you not have him more involved in the passing game and all this stuff? So I think this is going to be the week where Frank Reich is like, you know what? Let's get him involved. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that, except I, I don't. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not how, they didn't it's have not how Mike, green works. They have one good pass-catching weapon, Michael Pittman, and he was out last week, and you just don't use Naeem Hines at all. I feel like Pittman's going to be back. This is not So, I guess uh, Julio, I don't know if he's going to be back, but my my decision is between Darnell Mooney and Alan Lazard, and for me, I, that doesn't really feel like a decision. What about, what about Tyler Higby? I was thinking about Tyler Higby. Yeah, <sighs> I like that, honestly. I know we're not tight end premium, but still. Flexing it, catches. yeah, but flexing a tight end and non tight end premium just feels so feels grimy. dirty. Feels real dirty. But, but this like, is the right you, move. You want to start Naeem Hines or Alan Lazard? No. I mean, Naeem Hines is out of the question. Well, he shouldn't be. But I just brought that out because I needed to like be angry with him. You know? I yeah. So Alan Lazard and, and and I mean Lazard against the Bucks. You guys would not. So everyone is completely out on Darnell Mooney. Yes. Yes. I would drop. That's the. I would drop. You would Mooney. drop I'm not him. I'm dropping Mooney, him, but I'm keeping not him on in the this bench. format. But yeah, no, not in this format. But in like regular leagues. Yeah. I can't wait for Darnell Mooney to fucking go to the moon this week. One, one. Yeah, I'm he's gonna have like him, one yeah. or two weeks for sure. Wait, is he gonna fucking walk there? He has no way of getting to the moon. What do you mean? Justin Fields is gonna hit him on one of his two passes he throws in a game. That's fine. That's all we need. That doesn't sound like didn't the moon. he have good games last year? Like I'm, I don't get it, bro. He was ripping off like 130 yard games weekly yeah, at the end of fields. last year. Yes, with some with Fields, some with Dalton, but it was. Listen, I think the uh, I think the Bears are horrible right now. Yeah. But if you look at the offense, like there's no way they can look back at last week's and be like, all right, week one was a storm against San Fran. Week two, I don't I, I don't really have an excuse for it, but you have Justin Fields while you're down and trailing, throw the ball 11 times. Insane. There's no way you yeah. can look back at that and be like, okay, let's do... Like, we don't trust Fields, but we have to let him throw at least 25 times. And I feel like that's where Mooney... They're playing against Houston. Houston's kind of actually an underrated defense right now, but 
I think I'm going to start Mooney unless Julio plays. If Julio plays, oh, if Julio plays, then obviously play because Mike Evans is out. Yeah, but I don't. Julio's knees are starting to worry me now. He's like a fucking grandpa over there. Yeah, he's going to be a uh, you know game time decision every week for you, basically. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I feel I feel was no that? Julio. I'm going Higby. I think I would. It, it's close between Higby and Mooney. I think Alan Lazard is definitely a bench against the Bucks. The other two are close though. Like Higby's got the safer floor. Mooney's got the higher ceiling. It's whatever you want more. As of right now, Higby feels like what we want Allen Robinson I think, to be. I think for your <laughs> yeah, like that, and I think for your <laughs> team, <laughs> for your team, Higby gives you like that safe. Like you know, the rest of your team should do its thing, and you just need Higby to get you like eight, nine, ten points, and you're you know you're happy. Yeah, my team. You, know you don't want you don't want two for Mooney. That's most likely what you're gonna get. I I don't think that's true, but you probably zero. I think I'm the only. <laughs> I think I'm the only person that likes Mooney still at this point. Yeah, probably. Whatever. Well, my uh, Baltimore stack looked fantastic last week. Bateman and Andrews. Darrell Henderson's got me a little shaky. I, honestly, my team does not look good this week. Looks better than mine. I mean, that's not a very high bar. Yeah, it's, I got. I got a lot of. Are you zero two team. by the way, sexy? I'm zero two. You are zero two. All right, I'm one one. So at least I have something on you. Um, basically, I need to rely on my running backs to step up in a big way. McCaffrey, Eckler, Javante, none of them have done well this season. Um, and my receivers are a complete mess. DK Metcalf, trash. Judy, trash. Elijah Moore, trash. Adam Thielen, trash. Everybody's trash. Nobody on my bench I can even throw in there to replace him. Like, I've got, like, Devin Singletary or I'll Adam say, Thielen I would is start Cole Beasley this week, maybe. Uh, dude, he just got signed off the street. Yeah, yeah no, not yeah, doing that. Yeah, but it's Tom yet. Brady. <laughs> I, I'd want to see a week with him first. I get it. I get it. You know? It's going to be, like, the only week he has a good week, I think. Maybe. Probably get cut after this. I don't know. Um, all right. Well, any, uh, maybe Singletary. There's like, no one. Yeah, you're, you're not going to throw Beasley over any of these guys as, as disappointing as they've been. I mean, well, the thing I worry, Judy about, I worry about Judy. Yeah. I don't know if Judy's going to play. I don't or think Judy's going to play. You have good matchups this week. It's about the only thing you have going for you. I do really like Eckler this week. I think Eckler is going to have a big week, especially with Herbert being. I mean, hurt. he has to, gonna, if yeah. he doesn't have a big week this week, then it's all she wrote. Yeah. He might as well yeah. retire. I with think Dalvin I'd Cook. consider. I consider Singletary and they're like moving Thielen into your wide receiver spot, Judy down. And yeah, I mean, know. if Judy doesn't play, that's probably what I'm going to have to do because what else am I going to do? Like, even if Gallup plays, I don't want to throw him in there this week. No, I wouldn't. I mean, Singletary. Eh, Gallup's geez, a nice little piece to have. Terrible. I know. Yeah, it's so bad. You know what it is? <laughs> the, I think the biggest um, thing I'm starting to see with the bash is lineups are basically set for you like every week because yeah. unless you have a deep bench, you have like basically two decent flex options that anyone then, can, you could pivot to, but you better hope your starting lineup just hits. Yeah. Yes, and that's really it right now because, like, I'm looking at this. Like, you have a, your lineup is set. Like, this is the best lineup you can possibly set, other than I maybe have to keep you know, rolling with it. Yeah. So, okay. So, looking at how the the lineups are set right now, right? You have ten starting spots: super flex, three wide receivers, two running backs, tight end, two regular flexes, and just ten straight up bench spots. No defense, no kickers. If we had to rewind the clocks to make the settings again for this, what would you do differently? Cut the biggest, bench spots. No, the biggest change would be cutting more than that. I think it should be 15 rounds. See, that's a you can't do you can't that. Do that though. because of the playoffs. That's because the when the playoffs right. hit in weeks 13 to 17, waiver wires are done. Okay, so make you sure your make sure lineup's good by then. Yeah, but it's just it's a numbers game. Like you need players. I think if we just cut for two five weeks, weeks if, if a bunch of guys get hurt or something like that, like there's going to be people in the bash trotting out eight players in a starting lineup, which becomes I don't yeah. like that. I do think. Cutting two is two probably is like right. enough. That's what twenty four extra players on the waiver wire now. Yeah, but that's that, I feel like that's nothing. It's a lot. Twenty four extra it's players. A decent you amount. Cut the twenty four worst players from these teams. It's like yeah, and I would nothing. gladly take some of these players. I need them bad. Uh, I would cut two roster spots. I would also have made this tight end premium because that also opens up a lot more flex options for sure. you. Like I would yeah. love to play Tyler Higby this week if it was tight end premium. And that's something like we've been pushing towards more in most of our leagues. So I don't really know why we didn't just do that from the rip. But yeah, it's whatever. Plus, yeah, live and learn next year. We've made it. Very draft draft focused the way mm-hmm. the bash kind of turned well, out. The beauty of it though is that we have the ability now to make these changes for you too. So yeah, like yeah. you know we get we can. I mean you know, you love to open spots. up trading, but you can't with a no. league like this. Yeah, no yeah, it's too big. But we could definitely do something about roster spots. We could definitely do something um, about um, scoring. Yeah. Yes, that tight end premium. Yes, yeah. there's All definitely right. options. But I mean, as far as other options, you have no options to start anyone else. This is basically your lineup. Mike is sick. Uh, my my one other decision was Mariota versus Trevor Lawrence. I feel like it's gonna be a decision I get every week. That's close. I, I I just wrapped up my rankings. I want to say I have Mariota is like 16 and T Law is 17, maybe. Yeah, like yeah right I like Mariota strictly because of the matchup there. It's a good matchup. You got Seattle him. versus, you know, the Chargers got a good pass rush. So, you know, Trevor Lawrence can make some mistakes. I just don't want to deal with that. Plus, he had a good week last week. So, you figure, you know, good week, bad yeah, week, you know. Bad week. Do we not yeah. like expect Trevor Lawrence to have to try to keep pace with the Chargers, though? 
Uh, he might have to, but can he? I don't know. Yeah, it's with a the tough, Jaguars, tough defense to maybe. keep pace with. Yeah, keep it's I, a it's a tough defense, but he's always going to be in a in a game script where he has to you know keep throwing the rock. Well, it can go one of two ways. Like Herbert, I feel like it's going to be less than a hundred percent. I'd imagine like they're not just going to have him rip the ball down the field all the time. But at the same time, like if you're down a lot, it puts your quarterback kind of in. That, it, that's like turnovers. Who's zone, their backup you know? when you're asked who Herbert? Like who's the, who's the backup? Uh, who's the guy who Chase, Chase Daniel? Daniel? Yeah, Chase Daniel. Chase Daniel. Yeah, yeah no. Herbert's going to play this week for sure. Might, a little off topic. I might sprinkle a little bit on the Jags money line this week. Yeah, just in case like Herbert gets a big hit first quarter and goes out. I think I honestly think the Chargers still win that. Yeah, that's what you think. That's why I'm saying I'm going to sprinkle a little sprinkle. I think a it's a. Uh, this is the NFL. It's what you got to do. You always got to find the shit that you think will never happen. That's a that's a that's a super flex dynasty sprinkle. That's how you do that. Sure. In redraft, you don't do that. Yeah, it's a fucking waste. Yeah, your 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 opponent has a has a pretty fucking nice lineup, dude. Yeah, he does. I really like his team. He, he killed it every, everywhere. Like even James Robinson probably got him so late, and I can throw that, him in that's the like a game changer too. Whoever yeah. had like James Robinson in release because for the most part he was like a 12th, 14th round pick. Yeah, nobody was thinking about him at all. He's, like he's yeah. even got like Juju on his bench. Mm-hmm. Like I'll yeah, take that. Guy outside of his bench. like outside Tannehill is his QB too. It's about like the Juju on his bench, Mark Ingram who's like playing for Kamar. Yeah, he's he's got a pretty solid all around team. He's one on one. He's gonna beat the fuck out of you. That's sad. sexy McCaff strain. Has every I feel like every time you play someone, they have it's like a it's a name that's based on you. I think a lot of teams in my league have a name based on me. <laughs> Love that. My my league's got a couple of them too. About you? Little dogs. Yeah. A little Tony does not equal baloney. <laughs> Tony touch my PPR. Um, <laughs> See that beautiful helmet up there? Give it a little rub, animal. It's a, it's got that matte feel to it. It looks so sexy. I like wish that. I could raise it right now. No, you can't. Sorry. So we were given that uh, beautifully signed Super Bowl. Odell Beckham Jr. helmets by Pristine Auction, which is going to one of you guys. So we're doing a raffle each month. They're going to send us a new piece of merch signed. And one of you guys that signs up on Pristine Auction, when you get onto Pristine Auction and you use promo code BDG, they're going to give you $10 off your first purchase. So Pristine Auction is basically this wild, wild website of all memorabilia signed, used. Um, they have every single sport on there. I think, what, what sports do they have? They go football, baseball, yeah, basketball. Football, baseball, every sport. They basketball. get weird. I think they got NASCAR. They got like, you know, everything. Ping pong? I think yeah, they got ping pong. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I've never looked for ping pong. So Sexy, you ever been to a ping alley. pong show? I have not. You know what that is? Where they play ping pong. Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I nailed it. Got them. <laughs> <laughs> so head over to Pristine Auction. If you sign up with the promo code BDG, you're going to be automatically entered into the giveaway for this Odell Beckham signed helmets. I've already made like four or five email addresses and signed up and used our promo code because I want the helmet. I don't want to actually have to ship this out anywhere. It would look really nice in my office. It would look nice on Sexy's head. Yes, yeah, so head over to Pristine Auction. Use promo code BG. You're going to get $10 off your first purchase. You're also going to get entered into the free raffle for this Odell Beckham Jr. signed Helmets. Let's look at your uh, let's look at your lineup. My lineup is uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's not actually any. I'm not going back and forth on anyone. Like I, dude, my I lineup like your is team. set really because I fucking hate it. I can't even find it right now. I don't see anything wrong with your team. Uh, it has no heart. That is the problem I mean, that, with my that's team. That's a you thing, not a team thing. A. You know what? I put my players in the best position to succeed. I give them a motivational speech every fucking day after practice, and then they show up flat. Well, here's the thing. Like, you have strong Slide. wide receivers, Waddle, Mike Williams, and the the injury to Trey Lance boosted up three players on your team like, all yeah. at one time. You have Jimmy G now as your super flex guy as a third quarterback or probably maybe second among Matt Ryan. The run game with Jeff Wilson gets, I think, better. I think they're, like, more grounded in that sense. And I also think... Brandon Ayuk's probably better with Jimmy G. Sure. Maybe that last one's debatable, but I, I think, like, the, the offense gets more stability, and I feel like all three of those players kind of, like, moved up. And you also have Alan Kamara sitting on the bench there. So yeah. if he plays, like, you throw him in over well, Lazard, and you have yeah, a nice line. I love that. I, so I actually do have him over Lazard, not in the screenshot, but um, I don't know. Even still, it, it everybody feels very underwhelming. Maybe not Jalen Waddle. Waddle obviously has been explosive. He's been my one savior. But, like, you know, Kamara wasn't the late second that I wanted. Javante Williams in the third, I thought that was a value. Looking like... You're right. Like, Ayuk hasn't really actually done anything. Yeah. Goddard has been all right. I needed Goddard to come through for me on Monday night, and he just fell, like, a little short. And it was like, this is this is going to be the story of my though. team. What? He had a good game, didn't he? Yeah. I, I think the lineups... Uh, if Kamara plays, I think you... I think you win this week. He's got a really, he's got the Allen Diggs. Uh, yeah, he's got a great team here, combo. Probably. I don't know if I'd say a great. Look at those team. receivers. Even like Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel is another one of those guys who would have been. Curtis great is late, good. Late Lockett's not great. Uh, Pollard and Jacobs Lockett's like that. Sneaky. That running back combo is kind of gross. True. Kyle Pitts is terrible. 
Yeah, Pitts outside of a tight end premium, even like I don't even. Is th- Pitts that like helps. still startable? Dude, I like, have yeah, to. I have, have no one else, him. but like, yeah. It, do you though? Like, if you even if you have like fucking Robert Tunyon on your team, oh, on your bench, like, starting Pitts. Like, if it's like if I have Pitts, like Higby, I put I put Pitts down at like my tight end nine this week, and I was looking at like the rest of the rankings on Fantasy Pros, and people still have him as like the tight end three four, and I'm like, dude, like you got to chill with that, but I don't think you can put him below like fucking Pat Fryer within players. Oh, hundred percent, you can. You I was gonna say you farmers got like back to back twelve point games, I think. Like, yeah. Does he? Good. Yeah. I feel like we're we're now going on to like a full season it's, it's of Kyle Pitts like, being disappointing. Yeah. I mean I I hate him. It's probably <laughs> down, I hate him so much. Like the Zach Ertz tier. I mean, right. Zach Ertz isn't even playing, so like that's Z- not good. Yes. Zach Ertz just went like, like fucking like ten for seven, barely fucking yeah. playing. That's just and that's outrageous. That's almost he didn't play week one. He played week two, whatever, in a fucking an insane game. But yeah, I think sure. I think if you're starting tight okay. end and you're but not as Zach Ertz had 10, 10 points the first week and then twelve points this last. He went eight for seventy five last. He played week, week one. Yeah. yeah, I thought he didn't play week one. No. Good. Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah, Ertz is like t- tight end seven right now, probably. No, I thought I honestly thought he didn't play week one. I love seeing Kyle Pitts on an opposing team, fantasy yeah. wise, because he's he's gonna throw two points. That's it. You can lock him in for one or two points. I, for me, I would just be worried about the the Allen and then his three wide receivers. That's like the, those that quartet of players could just go off. Right? 100%. Yeah, Diggs, really Amon Ra, Drake London. I feel like this could be, like, Drake London's been good. I feel like this could I be. I think, like, Kurt Sam going to have a good game, too, yeah. probably. Like, I think you're fucked this week. His baseline feels very high. Yes. Yeah, I think when you have Josh Allen, it's just automatically that's the case. If you went Josh Allen and then stack good receivers with it, like, that's that's why you go fucking zero RB, because it raises your baseline, and running backs are pieces of shit. <sighs> Learning this the hard Man, way. This guy's got fucking... I like how we all learned at the same time. Prescott yeah. on the bench, James Conner on the bench, Dawson Knox, he's sitting there. He's got a, he got a nice little team. He has a, I didn't even realize he had James Conner on the bench. It's if crazy. he's healthy, he's yeah. just going to throw him in over Pollard, and now I'm big fucked. Conner didn't practice yesterday, so I don't know what his Pollard deal is. Pollard I still worry about, too, just because like they're going to split carries. Him and Seekers can get a lot of work until Dak is back. I'm not worried about Pollard. I'm not like, worried about him, but I don't think he's going to be a guy that's going to get like four points. I think he's going to have a nice game. You sound terrified. I, I mean, I'm terrified going into my matchup. This week. I guess, I, okay, I guess I do have a little bit of a, a roster question or a starting lineup question. Is it crazy to put Jimmy G over Matt Ryan? No. I mean, it's his first it's week back. Same. If Pittman's not in the lineup, you can't start Matt yeah, Ryan. Agreed. It's it's like starting Aaron Rodgers, a shit version of starting Aaron Rodgers without Devontae Adams. You know, yeah. Casey's also probably got a Casey has a nice defense, right? They're pretty good. They got a good pass rush at least. Yeah, I'll put them under pressure. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah. Who does who do they play this week? 49ers? Denver. Yeah. Suck. Oh, I would I would go Jimmy G over Matt Ryan. Yeah. Yes. If there's no Michael Pittman. Yes. Sad to fucking see, honestly. Yeah. You guys gonna have a side bet? We should have a side bet. And loser dies. Horrible side bet. Great side bet. Gonna honor it. I'm I'm down to die. Down to die. Yeah, I'm down to die. We're all down to die. <laughs> oh, we'll figure something out. We're gonna have this bash team. I'm down to die. All right. How's your lineup, animal? Let's do it. Josh Allen. There you go. I got what's well, so, up? I've got Nick Chubb going tonight, so uh, you know we're filming this Thursday, Thursday night football. Nick Chubb need a big game from him. I'm actually very nervous that he's going to have a shit game. Like it seems like it's just like the classic NFL thing. He's been on fire for two weeks. Everyone is hammering his over on his 84 and a half whatever rushing yards. I saw it on Twitter. So like just the under is due. Hit that under probably. Pittsburgh tough matchup. Yeah, Pittsburgh tough matchup exactly. Um, outside of tonight, I got Josh Allen. I got. I mean, my team is very. I really like your team. You know what, though? I don't. Yeah, I, I don't, don't like it either. at all. You're going to do the same thing, though. You're going to put Kamara over Lazard. And I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, Dude, I don't know. Everything from like. Uh, like Damon Pierce, I have no trust yeah. in. Like uh, it, my, my tight end, Kyle Pitts, I have no trust in. More Dotson. Don Dotson is like cool, but he, is he going to do something every week? Probably not. He's going to have some down weeks, and I'm probably going to experience one this week. But what about Carson Wentz being the QB1? Like yeah, Carson Wentz is going to keep playing like he is. Like Dotson's going to keep playing like he is. I mean, that's just my my big, one of my my strategies. Always, you just have two quarterbacks that can get you thirty points each week. So if I can get Josh Allen to give me thirty, Carson Wentz to give me thirty, I should be good. You know, the rest of my team just has to not completely suck. There's no way Wentz gave me thirty a week. I mean, he gave me twenty seven last week. Yeah, it's one week. And he gave me twenty nine the week before. Twenty eight. Relax. QB one. Yeah, um, but like your I, bench I, I, is god awful. It's, it's so bad. I told you. Like, this looks like it's a twenty team league. Like, why is Denzel Mims on my bench? Why is Brian Edwards, Denzel Mims, <laughs> KJ Hamler? I think Nico I drafted Collins. them, dude. Yeah, what is that? I don't on know. Board, like, you have like five horrible players. On. Go no, get somebody else. There's so, there has I, to be somebody, I, dude. I went to the waiver wire. I put in some claims. We'll see what happens. Denzel Mims. But I'm I not, love that Denzel Mims. Who'd you put in claims for? Not confident. Um, the process tomorrow. By the Richie time. James. Uh, 
<laughs> he's the best yeah, guy available. Have him than half the guys on your bench. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's literally well, the only. That's there's got to be other. Go to your league. You have there's, his league up right now. There's literally no one else. You should just start by dropping Mims, Edwards, right. and like, like more. set the tone. Yeah, Collins. You could probably drop Hooper. You can drop. No, I would keep Collins. Mike Davis. You can drop. It's like Richie James, Nelson Aguilar, Cedric Wilson, Braxton Berrios. Yeah, like all those guys. Yeah, replace on your all bench. the guys on your bench with all those guys. <laughs> That's what we're doing now. <laughs> like, Jawan Jennings. I feel confident you can drop your bench and no one would blink an eye. Like, no one would touch it on the waiver wire. Josh Reynolds, maybe. What? I don't know. Was, these are the Olamidi. No, 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 no. Uh, Quez Watkins. I'd rather have him than basically everyone on your right? team. He's not, I mean, I'll never play him, but like, just, just from a, a respect standpoint. Yeah, like an ego thing or just like a self respect thing. For yeah, sure. I'll, I'll give it to Brian Edwards. Sure. Do it live now. Drop these players. Oh, the no. team almost feels like just as much of a mess as mine. Yeah, it's terrible. It's we, we all have very similar issues right now where we have no depth on our benches. And we're basically... Don't throw me in there. Well, you know, the three of us have yeah, no depth on our... There. Yeah, you're in there for sure. Yeah. We have no depth on our benches, and there's nobody on the waiver wire, so we're just kind of... Rolling out our players every week, hoping for the best. And Sexy P, 0-2, hasn't seen the best. What are you, Tony? Are you 1-1? One I'm 1-1. One one. I'm 1-1 one one also, so it's just, you know. I'm a concerning 1-1, one one, though. Like, I don't have very many points scored. I almost fucking won the draft pick leaderboard last week. That's shocking looking at I had you. an yeah. insane week. That's insane. Who who did win that? Uh, Jalen Ramsey. Oh, yeah. Like, who in your team went off? You had League 33, I Christian think. Kirk. I guess Christian Kirk and Nick Chubb. Jalen Ramsey. Josh Allen and Carson Dawson, Wentz. Yeah, Josh Allen. Yeah. yeah. Like, I have a couple of core pieces that are very good, but the rest of my team is so awful that it almost makes them look worse. Like, it looks like, like oh, he's got Josh Allen, but, like, who cares? Because he's also got <laughs> fucking Denzel Mims and Alan Lazard. <laughs> look at that bench. <laughs> That dump trunk of a bench. Uh, my opponent, though, how, how, how does my how, do I actually have a chance of winning? He's owned two. Oh no, he's uh, due. Yeah, full full Mooney is fucking due. Oh wait, no. Yeah, oh, Mooney. oh shit. Is that a uh, wait a minute? Is that guy also in my league? Very possible. He may have two, but two rares. Am I just finding this out now? Maybe he bought in. I think you got a chance. I don't know. I'm not. I don't like his team too much. Oh yeah. shit, dude. Yeah, that, the guy you're playing is also in my league. I think he's got a. I think he's got a much like safer floor. It feels like I'm kind of like reading off the team, and I'm like, okay, it's not like it's not anything special. But you go down the lineup, there aren't a lot of holes in the lineup. Yeah, everything's just kind of okay. Yeah, like I'm not excited about Etn, Gibson, Lamb, Mike Williams. You like Juju? Actually, you know what? I, 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 I like, like Juju. your chances. I like Juju. Juju's fine, I guess. I feel like Juju's gonna have those weeks. I mean, he had like ten points first week. He had a fucking dud last week. Bateman scares me. Should because he can just go off at any moment for fucking. He's without Dak too, so he's got to throw Daniel Jones in there. Daniel Jones against Dallas. I like that. I think I, I think I have a chance here. I think you definitely have a chance. It's all gonna honestly. It's gonna come. It's gonna come down to Herbert and Allen. Like if those two put up close points or not. Because uh, the rest of my team is very. I don't like it. Don't like it. Yeah, a lot of holes on that team. All right, we've done our matchups. Now we're gonna create a, a beautiful uh, four leg square entry. Entry. Uh, that was beautiful. Four on. square entry. A four square entry on prize picks. Each of us are going to take a square and we are going to run amok on there. If you're new to prize picks, also use the promo code BDG. That'll get you a 100% deposit match. I will start us off because I'm assuming none of y'all are ready. I don't know. Super fucking ready. And I love Michael Carter's 18 and a half receiving yards. As long as Joe Flacco is under center, I'm taking the over on every running back receiving total that you could possibly find. He's nailed 18 and a half receiving yards easily the first two games of the season. Joe Flacco has, I believe, 103 pass attempts on the year, 15 yeah, higher than the next closest quarterback. They're passing, they're passing, they're passing, and they're dumping off to the running backs. I believe through two games, Michael Carter has averaged seven targets, six catches, and 33 and a half receiving yards per. I just don't see a way that uh, he doesn't get there. He's playing a significant amount of snaps and splitting with... Um, with Brees Hall, and he's getting the larger share of the receiving work. So Michael Carter over 18 and a half seems like a absolute smash. Love it. Thank you. I got Mr. Josh Allen with the uh, pass, rush, and receiving touchdowns. We're going with more than two and a half. Look, it's Josh Allen, division game. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Josh Allen, division game. He's going to have the ball out. Miami balled out last week. Could be a shootout. He's going to score a lot. He's the best player on the team. Best player in the world. Yeah. He's so fun to watch fo fucking play football. 
When was the last time like he didn't hit this number? I don't know. I even look, because I don't think it matters. It was five games ago. Yeah. Including so playoffs, he's he's four of the last four hitting this. Yeah. And every actually he scored four touchdowns or more in four straight games, yeah, including a, a five touchdowner. This is pass rushing, receiving, like he's gonna do it all. He's gonna get one of each, maybe even kick a field goal. Fuck around, put him on kick return. <laughs> yeah, why not? I wouldn't want to tackle Josh Allen. <laughs> not tackle that motherfucker. Holy shit. <laughs> shit, man. I got no fucking clue. I can't even log into my account. All right, this is gonna be a two square parlay then. <laughs> I did see one that was kind of interesting. I don't know if I want to like really tie to it. You know, you don't want to like if you're putting your name behind a square. I feel like you normally don't want to go with the first one you see. How about this one? I like this one a lot, actually. Amon Ra St. Brown, 70 and a half receiving yards. He's playing the Vikings this week. Vikings defense looking a little booty, a little suspect. But their offense, we know to be nice against the Lions. This could be a shootout. Amon Ross St. Brown has hit over 70 yards four out of his last five games going back last season. And when he goes over, when he hits more than 70 yards, he's crushing it. 116, 109, 111. Amon Ross St. Brown is elite. Are we ready for that? Are we ready to admit that Amon Ross St. Brown is one of the best young up-and-coming receivers in the NFL? I like him. Dude's literally making Jared Goff cool again. Remember when Jared Goff was cool in Cal? He was like the number one overall. Jared pick. Goff was cool when we said it yeah, like a we, month ago. Yeah, like we did were we, on Jared Goff. We but said why? Jared Goff why? over why Aaron Rodgers. Why is he Rogers? cool though? We did. It, that was crazy. But either way, he's sharp. Cool. Are we right right now? We are right because of Amon Ross St. Brown. Sure. However you want to get there. <laughs> That's how we all got there. <laughs> Amon Ra actually going back to last season, he has, uh, what would you say, left four out of the last five? It's actually seven of the last eight. Seven of the last eight. This number's not catching up to Amon Ross St. Brown. No corner is catching up to Amon Ross St. Brown. The sun god. God damn, that was such a lock. Prize picks, what are you doing? 70 and a half receiving yards. Need one, Sexy? Um, I got you. I'm I a think, sharp. I think I got one. I, I was able to log into my account. We're getting there. All right, I'm going to go Devin Singletary under 40 and a half rush yards. Playing the Dolphins. The Dolphins have already established themselves as a team that loves to sling the ball. I think this is going to be very fast-paced. Offense is both throwing the ball a lot. Singletary, deja vu from this. Did you guess? Did you pick this last week? No, I've never mentioned Devin Singletary in my life. Oh, all right. He had eight carries week one, six carries week two. So they don't trust him to get more than 10 carries a game. So at, th- at that rate, I don't think he's going to hit 40. Um, Zach Moss is involved. They even got fucking James Cook involved. Josh Allen, they throw the ball 55 yeah. times a game. How much are they really going to run the ball? I think he's going to easily go under 40 and a half. Lovely. All right, so that's the four square. Uh, promo code BGE, prize picks 100% deposit match. First time users, up to $100. Said that a little out of order, but you got the idea. You got the idea, right? You know how it would be. Right, you know how it is. All right, any uh, final words, final thoughts? My team, still heartless, hate it, but we're going we're gonna to grind through this season. I'm looking to go three and zero and represent this company. Well, I please the number do one player in the world. At this point, you're the only one from the company who may actually have a chance of winning. So. I just I'm glad that I can't do worse than Animal did in E Town because the worst I can go is zero and twelve. Yeah, you're finding a way though. You're on your way to zero and twelve. Zero and twelve. You know, zero and twelve is worse than one and thirteen, right? Uh, not worse than zero and thirteen though. Yeah, but I went one and thirteen. Uh, you started zero and thirteen. But so it's all about how you finish. What's going to happen you if you, you never win a game in the bash? I'm not letting you be in it gonna, next year. We're going <laughs> to send you to Canada. <laughs> If you lose this week and go 0 and 3, how long are you going to talk if with a New York week, accent? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to use a New York accent for how long? Oh, until you get a win. Un- until you win a game. <laughs> yeah, until you win a game, you have to you have to be the New York accent. <laughs> give it, give right, us a little up. taste of it right now. Yeah, give us the outro. Forget about it. Tell them to like and subscribe in a New York accent. I don't even know how it'd start with that. That we didn't ask for you to know. Just do it. <laughs> it's just <Hey>. like <laughs> It's like and subscribe. It's like three words. I don't. I don't know how. You know uh, how. I, know I you. don't. You want me to do it like a Canadian? Yeah. Hey, oi! Like and subscribe to this channel. See. All right. All you did right there was put the word oi in there, yeah. and then like pause three seconds in between each yeah. word. It wasn't an accent. That's Australian, that not Canadian, right? Yeah, maybe. We need to cut this shit. Yeah, maybe. Sexy work on your New York accent. Okay. Forget about it. I'm walking here. See that video? I'm walking here. <laughs> We're fucking out of here.